I want to teach you a fantastic flexibility concept known as reciprocal inhibition, which is something that you can use no matter what part of your body you want to improve the flexibility of, either for yourself or maybe for your students or friends, depending on what your needs are. This concept is basically a very functional way of making yourself more flexible. It's not about static or passive stretching, which is the most usual way of improving our flexibility, right? But for this concept, you need to take advantage of the natural elasticity of your muscles. Because here's the thing, if you have a joint, there are muscles connected to the joint, right? Flexors and extensors. And the thing is, when you contract one side, one muscle, you naturally extend the opposing muscle. Meaning, if you want to improve your flexibility in one muscle, you need to identify the opposite side muscle and contract that. In essence, that is the principle behind reciprocal inhibition. So let me just show you an example. Let's say I'm on the ground here and I have super tight hamstrings, all right? Just not, not in real life, of course, I'm super flexible, but you guys get the point. Let's imagine that I have stiff hamstrings because a lot of people have. Now, there might be a lot of different reasons as to why they are stiff. But let's just say that for now, I have stiff hamstrings. Now, what people usually do is passive stretching. They try to touch their toes, right? Which is a way to try to lengthen the hamstring muscle and get rid of that stiffness. But what if we apply the concept of reciprocal inhibition instead? Well, that would look something like this. The opposite of the hamstring would be the quads and my hip flexor. So I would instead focus on contracting these muscles to naturally lengthen the opposite side muscle, which in this case is my backside. Meaning I'm right now, as I'm trying to contract the front, I am stretching the back. And this is way more functional because this is actually how your human body works when you're trying to naturally move your joints through their full range of motion. It, is, uh, it involves an active element of strength, which means that you can actually apply it for kicks and stances and movements as opposed to the very static and passive nature of traditional stretching. Now, okay, so let's say that I try to just pull my leg up all the way as much as I can towards my face. I will start to feel a sensation in the back side of my leg, which is that stretch, right? But this might be difficult if you lack the strength or the mobility to move your leg in this direction. So a way to make this concept even more practical is by using a friend or just resistance. It doesn't have to be with a partner. It could be a wall or even your own body. So let me just show you an example here. Again, let's say I've, I'm, I'm stiff and I want to improve my flexibility for lifting my knee for high kicks, right? So we have that inhibition here for the contracted side. I have that the reci reciprocal side, the opposite side is up here. So I'm going to add the resistance using my own hands. I'm basically going to just push against my knee. And whenever you use this concept, try to just have 10% power. Don't go full force against the resistance. You don't want any injuries. It is a stretching exercise, not a power-based strength exercise, right? 10% power is enough. And then let's hold it for 10 seconds times three. So again, using that same exercise, I'm going to push. First, I find my maximum range of motion. Let's say I cannot lift my leg higher than this. I would now give myself a little bit of slack. I would push against my own knee and now I push against my hands for 10 seconds. I just keep pushing and gradually as I use and contract the muscles on my front, I will feel that the muscles on my back start deactivating, which releases them for that stretch. I push, I push 10 seconds and now my new range of motion is up here. Now, if I wanted to keep improving my range of motion, my flexibility, I would just continue now from this new end point. Same thing. After that, I would have a new end point up here and so on, gradually improving my range of motion by adding resistance and contracting the opposite side 
of the muscles that I actually want to get more flexible. Let me show you another example. Let's say I have a stiff chest. Now, what do you do? This is the classical stretch, right? Follow me. Oh my God, I hit the heavy bag. My pecs are so sore. I need to stretch them out. This is what people do, right? Passive static stretching for the front. Now, if we want to apply this concept, well, then we would do the opposite, right? I would try to contract my backside instead. So, without resistance, I would simply try to do this and try to just feel my body. But again, like I said, it's even better with resistance. And I don't have a friend around who can help me. So I'm just going to use this pillar right here. And I'm going to find my end range of motion. I'm going to back up a little bit just to give me some space to move. And now I start pushing. And I'm not trying to push with my legs or my core or anything. I'm just trying to identify the opposite side, which would be right there. I push, I push, I push. Again, 10% is enough. Don't go 100%, but you can gradually increase the intensity if you feel like it, right? 10 seconds, I relax and let go, and now here is my new range of motion. Suddenly that stiffness is gone. Again, let me show you another example, because you can use this for any part of your body. That's the fun thing. Let's do the, uh, the wall over here. Okay, I got tight hips. Let's just imagine. What do people do? Well, they start stretching their hips, usually this way. And sometimes they like to bounce up and down, right? A little bit of dynamic movement. That's fine. But again, it's just a very passive way and not as efficient as using the natural mechanism of that elasticity, that stretch response when you contract the opposite side of the muscle. So in this case, if I want to stretch my hip, the front part, I would strive to activate my glutes and the backside. So how do I do that? Well, for example, I could try to actively push against the floor. So instead of trying to stretch the front side, I try to push with the back side, right? That would be good. But even better is if I can add some resistance, like I've already told you. So now I'm going to be using the wall. I will actively try to push the wall away from me, but not using my arms and not by leaning, but by pushing with the back side of the same leg that I want to stretch the hip flexor up. So I would go this way and I'm actively trying to push the wall away from me using this part of my body because this is where I want, this is where I want the flexibility to happen. So I need to contract the opposite side. I'm activating my butt and I'm pushing, 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 10%, 10 seconds. And then you just retest, see if you can maybe go deeper. Oh yes, I can because I just improved my range of motion. I got way more flexible and all I need is that 10 second stretch. But by pushing with the opposite side of the muscle that you actually want to make more flexible. And that's it for today. I hope the concept of reciprocal inhibition can help you improve your flexibility in a more functional manner as opposed to the old school traditional stretching. Even better, combine them both. Train hard, good luck and have fun.